Hello, kindergarten, and happy Tuesday. We're going to be reading another great story, and this story is called Actual Size. Now, as you can probably see in the cover, this is a very, very large hand, but it belongs to a gorilla. So look how big the hand is. So if I put my hand down compared to this gorilla's hand, my hand looks teeny tiny, super duper small. So we're going to be thinking about the actual size of different animals, whether they're really, really big or they're teeny tiny, super duper small. So as we listen to the story, I want us to be thinking about a couple of things, whether the story is fiction or nonfiction. So let's refresh our, um, our thoughts and definitions about those words. We know that a fiction story is not real. And we know that because we see lots of pictures, there's pretend um, characters. We know that there are animals sometimes that are talking or wearing clothes. We know that there are objects that are also talking at times. And we know that they can be set in many different places like castles or forest or in different time zones, whatnot, different countries. So we know that there's a lot of different settings in a fiction story. But remember, we always know fiction stories are not real. And we know that because we see made up characters or animals talking. And then we also know that there are stories that are nonfiction. A nonfiction story means that it is real. And we're learning lots of information. We are learning facts. We are learning lots and lots of facts. And we know that it's nonfiction because we oftentimes see photographs, not all the time, but usually we see photographs. And we can also be learning about different things. Maybe we're learning about animals, sports, or the holidays. So we know that a nonfiction story, it is real. We know that a fiction story is not real. So I want you to think about, is this story fiction or is it nonfiction? So let's go ahead and get started with our story, actual size. And the author is Steve Jenkins, and he is also the illustrator of these pictures. So right here is something called the Atlas Moth. And it is so large that it is often mistaken for a bird. How big that moth is. Did you ever look a giant squid in the eye? Have you shaken hands with a gorilla or been face to face with a tiger? All the animals in this book are shown at actual size. So you can see how you measure up to creatures, both large and small. And right here at the bottom, we see a teeny tiny fish that's called the dwarf goby. And this fish is the smallest fish of all. The giant squid lives deep in the ocean where its enormous eyes help it see in the dim light. So have you ever seen a giant squid? This is how big the eye is, look at how large and humongous the eye is. So we're looking at all these animals up close, the actual size of a giant squid's eyes. The Alaskan brown bear is the largest meat eating animal that lives on land. So look at how big the head of a brown bear is, it's huge, it's humongous. Apparently they weigh over a thousand pounds. Very, very large creatures. And here is the largest bird, an ostrich with its egg. Look at how big an ostrich egg is. Huge. And that's just the head and the neck of the ostrich. But it is our largest bird. So let's stop and think for a second. Is the story fiction, meaning that it's not real, or is the story nonfiction? So if it's fiction, we know that there are talking animals. We know that animals can wear clothes. We know that there are a lot of made up places. And we know that nonfiction is real. We learn facts and we see photographs. Well, one thing I notice as we are reading the story is that I don't see photographs. I just see drawings. But even though we're looking at all these animals, none of these animals are talking. 
So I'm thinking that maybe even though I see pictures and not photographs, I think this is nonfiction because none of these animals are talking and I'm learning about the size of these different animals. Like we just learned, this is the eye of a giant squid and this is the head of a giant Alaskan brown bear. So maybe I'm not sure right now, but I'm thinking maybe it's nonfiction. Let's keep reading. Let's look at this. This right here is a tongue from an anteater and they are eating their favorite food, which is termites. So this is the tongue of a giant anteater and it's two feet long. And again, they love to eat insects, not just ants, but also termites. So these are termites on the page. So giant anteater tongue, look at how long that is. This animal is the Goliath bird eater tarantula, and it's big enough to catch and eat birds and small mammals. So this tarantula, and tarantulas are different from spiders because the tarantula does not make a web. And this uh, type of tarantula, they eat birds. Pretty scary. So, let's see what's next. Hmm. This is the saltwater crocodile. The world's, world's largest reptile is a man eater. So they can in fact eat people. So you have to be very careful if you ever go to Florida or anywhere uh, where there's crocodiles, be very, very careful. They are not nice animals. That is how big and large that long snout is. Pretty scary. And here is the Goliath frog, and it lives in Africa. It's big enough to catch and eat birds and rats. So they eat birds and rats. Huge, huge frog. And whoa, this is too close to a great white shark. Did you know that a great white shark is 6,000 pounds? So it is super huge and super heavy. Would you ever wanna be this close to a giant shark? No, not me, no thank you. So again, I want you to be thinking, is this story fiction, meaning that it's not real, or is this story nonfiction, that it is real? Are we learning facts or are we watching animals and you know characters talking? Are we seeing photographs? Are we seeing pictures? Are there made up characters in the story? Think about those things. Is the story fiction or nonfiction? And look right here, just like at the cover of our story, this is the giant hand of a gorilla. Look how small my hand is in comparison. Super duper small. So the huge gorilla and the pygmy mouse lemur both have hands a lot like ours. So as you can see, just like we have five fingers, this lemur does as well. But this lemur is super small and we know that gorillas are super big. And look right here, that is the Siberian tiger and it's the biggest of the big cats. So this is even bigger than a lion. This is even bigger than a lion. Pretty scary. I wouldn't want to see that animal. This is the Goliath beetle and it's the world's heaviest insect. So it is super heavy. And this right here is a giant walking stick and it's the world's longest insect. So look how long that insect is, super duper long. Wow, this foot belongs to the large land animal, the African elephant. Look at how large the foot of an African elephant is. Look at how big that foot is. I mean, your hand is so tiny in comparison to this giant, giant elephant foot. So these are all the different creatures that were in our story today. Some are really large, 
tall or long and some are really teeny teeny tiny super duper small so what do you guys think do you think this story is fiction or nonfiction? i want you to think about it let's remember we know that a fiction story is not real we know that it has lots of pictures pretend characters we know that it has lots of different settings and characters like animals or toasters that are talking. But we know that a nonfiction story, it is real. And we learn lots and lots of different facts from that story. We also see photographs most of the time. And we're learning about a lot of different things like sports or holidays or animals. So we're learning lots of different things as we read a nonfiction story. So take a moment to think about that. Is this story fiction or is it nonfiction? Is it fiction or is it nonfiction? Take a moment to think about that. All right, you guys have a wonderful, amazing, awesome Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for working so hard. Bye-bye now.